Hello everyone, thank you for joining us tonight. I have some exciting things to share. Uh, so we're going to be talking about black holes, tachyons and ET technology. So I've got a few videos because I really feel that um, with this subject visually, we can kind of explain it a little bit more in depth. And thank you to everyone who's joining us. I hope you all had an amazing solar eclipse. Um, and yeah, I look forward to talking a little bit more about that through the week too, on exactly like what I felt into before the solar eclipse, uh, solar eclipse and yeah, kind of my perspective on things, but that would be like a whole nother show. Um, so tonight we're going to start with, let me just go through my notes and things. I also want to remind you guys to please like, share and subscribe over on Mesa on Jupiter. If you're not watching it on YouTube, you may be watching this on Rumble. We appreciate the love, the clicks and likes and I have some noisy magpies here with me today so you can see uh Julie Elena and Sophie and I have been putting out a lot of shows so it is good to check in and see if there's any new ones from time to time if you don't want to miss one hit the notification button as well that also is really much easier so let's have a look first into the topic of black holes now this topic came to me I'm just going to pop this up for a second so this topic came to me, uh, I think it was while I was in like a channeling session. And that's why I wanted to talk to you guys about this tonight. So years and years ago, I was working with um, <clears throat> feeling into different stars because I've worked as a psychic researcher before as well. So one of the things that I sort of gave myself a task was I had a vision of a black hole one night going to bed and psychically you can kind of send your energy into different things. So whether it's like remote viewing and going into a building or remote viewing and feeling into a situation. Um, but yeah, so I decided to remote view and feel into a black hole. And as I sort of was enveloped energetically into the black hole, what was interesting to me was the amount of information that was was there. To me, it appeared to be some kind of Akashic records. Um, I felt that with the energy of the black hole, and I just saying hello to all of the gorgeous people as well. So lovely to see you all here. And I love it how you guys communicate with each other too. Um, so yeah, what I was seeing was I was tuned in and I felt enveloped by this space and almost kind of sinking into uh, a carpet. That scene in Train Spotting, where he sinks into the carpet, would be one way to uh, to explain it. And even since I was uh, in kindergarten, I would have things like this show up, where it's almost like there's a guide or a teacher trying to teach or explain things, and it usually is around questions to do with the universe or, um, you know, physics and and various different other topics. Um, yeah, so one of the other experiences I was talking about around sort of age four or five was that same feeling of being swallowed up uh, into the universe, which can feel really interesting because on a physical vibration level, it feels like you're vibrating at such a kind of resonance that you feel like your particles will um, cease to exist and almost uh, not just implode, but like dissipate and become part of the space-time fabric. So when we look into what a black hole is, a black hole is uh, a star that was existing. And if we look into more kind of um, theosophy, you know, they talk about stars and planets each having a consciousness. So just like we have our own individual consciousness. So when we look into information around a black hole, if it's a dying star, it has consciousness still, but what happens is it still retains all of this information. So from what I was shown around, you know, being able to tap in or being able to kind of feel into a black hole, ask questions, it's almost like an Oracle or Akashic Records. And I've just found some new videos, literally one or two minutes before coming on today, that um, NASA's now put something up to do with a new theory. And so has, um, Deepak Chopra has put a good video. So I want to link that in here if I can bring that up too. Um, because I, I want to share it to you guys who are interested in this topic. You can research it further. But anyway, what Spirit was showing me years ago, they're now actually developing theories around this. So yeah, if we think about a dying star and we think about that collapsing, there's another <clears throat> theory around this too. Excuse me for a second. Let's get some water.
So yeah, if we think about a dying star collapsing and there's other videos and things that you'll find and information, say for example, if we put this pencil into a black hole, that black hole then has to kind of grow to, to take that in too. So it's interesting if we're to go to, um, to visit the Akashic records, are we actually inquiring or looking into connecting consciousness with this dying star that's absorbed all of this information? So just a, just a little theory and a thought, but yeah, it does seem like science is bringing some more information to us around this. So let's have a look. I'm going to bring up this slide and read this to you guys. So the great black hole information escape. So as black holes radiate, information appears to be lost. This can be avoided uh, can be avoided if the entanglement entropy of the radiation rises and then falls. Recent calculations have um, have happened via a quantum external surface that appears just inside of the black hole's event horizon. And this is depicted, I will show you a clip from Interstellar. It's not the part where we see the event horizon. In the movie Interstellar, you'll see where they're traveling towards a black hole and there's this white light with sparkles, sort of gold coming at them. And that's the event horizon. Um, so any, everything else of this surface is suddenly not part of the black hole. Exactly how this happens and what it means is still an enormous mystery. So you see in the little infographic, number one, black holes radiate by forming entangled particle pairs. So one particle flies out and the other in. So we can see here there is towards um, the outside the event horizon, we see there's entangled radiation. And then when we head towards number two, we see as the, num um, as the number of entangled particle pairs grow, so does the entanglement of entropy. And the reason I'm talking about, about this, and when we look into like negative entropy too, we also see how some craft and some that I've seen will be like a white sphere or energy, which you can feel higher intelligent consciousness, but they have a propulsion system where they almost open up or create a black hole and they're traveling through that black hole to propel themselves through space. So this is such a cool <laughs> subject. It's something that, um, yeah, I love to geek out and think about all of these things. And I love it when it shows up, whether I'm doing readings, because um, I do have some clients that will get me to research and investigate things from a psychic point of view. And as I said before, I have worked as a psychic researcher. Um, so yeah, space is one of those cool things to look into. So what we see here as the pairs grow, so do the entanglement entropy. And so when we head to number three on this, it says a quantum external surface appears just inside of the horizon, making the black hole into something like a shell. So we see sort of like in that inner nucleus looking level, the um, quantum external surface. And then we see on the outside, the non-entangled radiation. So we see number four, it says the innermost particles are no longer part of the black hole. Their entanglement no longer counts towards entropy. And on number five, it says, as the black hole radiates the last of its energy, the total entanglement entropy drops to zero. Now, don't forget, we're talking about a conscious, um, a conscious living being, if we're looking at it from a spiritual uh, perspective as well. So this diagram, oh, thank you, Larry. So this diagram was from quantummagazine.org. Um, so you will be able to type in black hole and that and find it. So when we look into if we're wanting to find information, so say, for example, you, you know, go into your meditative space, whether it's doing hemisync or binaural beats or breath work, whatever it is that you do to bring yourself into that theta mindset, then you want to be able to focus. So I've actually had my brain measured and hooked up to devices when I'm doing this sort of work. And what they find is that it's in a deep, deep meditative state, but with like a heightened sense of uh, focus as well. Oh, Britt, that's so cute. <laughs> yeah, soul is the sun and it's spelt S-O-L as well. Um, so yeah, when we look into that um, <clears throat> and getting into state to ask these questions, are we actually quantumly entangling ourselves with the energy of that which we're wishing to kind of connect with? So say for example, I want to find out information around this pink ET skull 
but it's not in my location. So for example, we could search into the quantum field to connect with this energy. So therefore our aura and our psychic energy starts to entangle with this. And when you get really good with clairvoyance and clairsentience and everything, we're actually picking up emanations or vibrations that come from this. So when we look into black holes and the new theory around this, they talk about kind of like a little micro microtubule type energy or what's called a twister, which I want to see which chart I had next. Um, let me put this little next video on for you guys. I'm just going to bring this up. I'm just going to click through a few things. So I'm going to clear that chart. All right. Takes a bit of work to find the slides that I've got on here for you guys. All right. This looks like it might be it. Yep. Okay. I'm going to bring this one up and this will sort of explain what I'm trying to, to talk about. I'm talking about it from a psychic point of view and how it feels to connect in with this. So um, this is a little video. Let me push play. Inside a black hole and see what lies beyond its event horizon. What if you could recover the information that was swallowed by the black hole and reveal its hidden secrets? And what if there is a new theory of gravity that explains how this is possible? This is the twisty theory of gravity, a new idea that challenges our conventional views of gravity, space, and time. It suggests that black holes have quantum hair that encodes information on their surfaces using twisters, and that information can escape black holes through quantum teleportation using twisters and hawking radiation. This twisty theory of gravity could potentially solve one of the biggest mysteries in physics, the black hole information paradox. But how does it work? And what does it mean for our understanding of the nature of reality? Check out the full video on YouTube to learn more about this new theory. See you next time. What if you could peek inside a black hole and see what lies emptiness is form and form is emptiness so today let me share with you some ideas on emptiness look around you and be aware of the space you're in the space in your room the space outside your room the space between your fingers the space between objects well this space that you're aware of is a window to a much deeper reality. Let's look at some of the ways um, both ancient philosophers have spoken about it, but also what science may say about it. So let me first talk about the concept of the Akashic field or the Akashic record. This holds a significant place in various esoteric and Eastern spiritual traditions. So let's look at this a little bit. First, the background and the terminology. Akasha. The Sanskrit word Akasha means ether or sky or the infinite void.
Got it. <laughs> I heard the mic on mute. Sorry, guys. Still a bit sleepy. We've changed in daylight savings, so I'm up a bit earlier today. I guess it's changing. Oh. So we can see here he's in kind of a different dimensional space. And interesting that it almost looks a little bit like library books too, when we're talking about the Akashic Records. So he's left home. I think there's a 10 year time difference or gap for the mission that he's on. So he's peering into his reality with his children, but he's sort of outside of reach energetically from them. So he can see him, but they can't see him. I just want to say hi to Julie. So we can see with this how he's able to um kind of interact energetically so if we're talking about quantum entanglement you know with his daughter she can kind of like get a sense or a feel or he's able to use his energy to you know drop objects and things like that so how many things are trying to reach us um and it's interesting i was talking about this with a client just yesterday we were talking about um she randomly brought up uh charlotte's web and i said i had an interesting experience with charlotte's web i was doing um some kinesiology work maybe about 20 years ago now and on my bookshelf a book started to move out from the actual bookshelf and i felt my grandfather's energy around and so the book was just edging, edging, edging. So I opened up the book. So I'm like, I think Spirit's trying to tell us a message. When I opened it, it was such a beautiful message for my client and myself talking about that, you know, sometimes uh, we can be so different in the world. Um, I forget the exact quote, but yeah. So I wonder if that was that same thing of maybe there was a quantum entanglement or maybe, you know, spirit can actually impact physically similar to what we were just being shown uh, in Interstellar. And yeah, I think Tim was saying it's a good movie. It definitely is. Um, but it's interesting the way that they choose to depict things. So I didn't want to spend too much time on black holes, even though we could do a whole, a whole nother show. I'm just making sure. Oh, so another thing around this too, when we look into entanglement, and we look into not just the energy with black holes, but say like quantum entanglement and things when it comes to the stars and comes to us and um, space and that. What about thinking about the geometry between this? So what kind of geometries uh, form with this quant uh, quantum entanglement? And we know when we look into like the Vedic side of things like we talked about uh, last week. Yes, thank you, Tim. Please like, share and subscribe. It definitely is earlier here. Um, so yeah, have a look into as well, 
when we look into platonic solids and we look into sacred geometry, we look into mandalas, what is it energetically that we're also quantumly entangling ourselves with? Can we tap into messages in the universe? And even like with the Sri Yantra and, you know, like Merkabahs, different things, there is messages that come from this, um, this shape or this image. And even when we look into, I don't have them on my desk at the moment, but like the set of platonic solids, each of the geometries represents like a different thing, whether it's earth, air, fire, ether. So, you know, different shapes hold different levels of consciousness. So when we talk about black holes or we talk about, for example, um, you know, say, for example, we have a black hole. If we bend uh, space and collapse it, we can actually travel through different wormholes and different tunnels as well. So let's get into kind of like the ET uh side of things where we look into craft and we look into other things but yeah I just want to touch on that oh before we get too far into craft I do have a list of different things that I will just quickly list out so in terms of like uh UFOs ETs and um yeah technology we have anti-gravity and gravitational manipulation so when we look into black holes and that it does talk a little bit about gravity too we have exotic energy sources so some theories are like um looking into uh, a lot of them are theoretical as well and some of them have been like reverse engineered and i will show you here there was a, a russian uh crash that was from a UFO. So we're going to have a look at that tonight too. So we also have plasma and ion propulsion, warp drives, wormholes, uh, advanced aeronautics. Uh, we talked about red mercury a little bit uh, last week with the Vedic crafts. Uh, we also have thought consciousness, Merkabahs, that some enlightened or higher, I wouldn't even call them ETs, even though some of the Pleiadians um, will travel in this kind of consciousness craft. But we have um, thought consciousness crafts, which is like traveling in our light body or our Merkaba. We also have, um, and this one sounds a little bit strange, but when you're an ET experiencer and you sometimes will have these experiences or look around and see things on craft, um, one of the ones that I've witnessed and seen was a, it was like a living kind of uh, energy in the middle of the craft. So it was like a fungus or like a fungi. So it has intelligences and it is living. So it's almost like a living UFO. Um, so that, that is an interesting one. We also have the ones that we talked about um, when we did the show on USOs, which was the trans medium, you know, UFOs that can go from, um, you know, in space into water, back into air without having to slow down. So that's more of a trans medium one, which we're starting to see a little bit of disclosure around. And we also have TARDIS type crafts, which are really, really interesting too. Oh, Debs, that's so sweet. I love animals. Um, and I can see a few of you guys going down the rabbit hole. I can see Corbin's been researching Merkabahs all day. So, yeah, that is something that we can activate. Um, Dron Velo Melchizedek probably has some of the best information that I've seen on uh, activating the Merkaba. Um, but, yeah, when we look into, like, the TARDIS-type ones, it really is like in Doctor Who, where we have this UFO that we go in, and then there's a bigger space. And I might even show um, one of the examples that I have of that kind of technology tonight, too. So we also have multidimensional or interdimensional craft. We have orbs. We have scout ships that will come out of larger crafts. We have cloaking cloud ships, uh, which I've shown you guys quite a few times the one that I filmed over uh, Lake Yosemite, which was like cloud ship that was cloaked that had one of these little orb scout ships come out of it. So you'll see these quite often over uh, like mineral lakes, things like that. Uh, we also have over here, uh, there is a place in Melbourne, in Victoria, where I live. And it's called Westall 66. So it's a UFO uh, crash that happened in, and I'm, do you know what? I could actually take you guys out on an adventure and go and visit and do like a live show around that. So I won't talk too much on it. But anyway, there's a huge amount of radiation that was involved uh, with this craft is what it looks like when you investigate the area. So you have these tall, tall trees that are pine trees. And we all know pine trees are, are straight. So where the UFO was, um, I guess, situated in the sky over these trees, all these trees have bent in. 
and where the UFO actually landed and touched down on the ground. And by the way, there was about 200 witnesses because it happened right next to a school. So all these kids ran out of the school in 1966 and followed this craft where it landed. So you can still see a little bit of the ring mark burnt into the grass today. So um, yeah, I think we'll do a show where we go on an adventure with that. That will be a lot of fun. And it's getting cold here this morning. So I think maybe I should do that show before it gets too cold over here. But um, Travis Walton, who has the story fire in the sky. Um, and I've met Travis as well at a UFO conference where we were both speaking. And his energy is definitely different to do with the interaction that he's had with the ETs and to do with the um, radiation that he touched with the craft too. But what they also noticed is with that forest where the craft landed in his case, they actually were able to look at the trees and the trees had a different kind of growth to them as well. So it does seem like some of these uh, technologies impact impact, um, you know, impact the environment on a, a very physical level. And it seems to have impacted uh, Travis as well. He looks a lot younger <laughs> than his age too. So yeah, that would be so much fun. Hey, I'd love to take you guys on an adventure. It'd be amazing to do it in person, but we will do it via video. So let me see which one we have next. So now we're going to I'm going to show you guys a video about an ET material that's been found. So we know that we have meteorites and things like that come into, um, you know, our atmosphere. So let me put this up. We were using microscopes and we collected magnetic material from the ocean floor that is two kilometers deep. And uh, first we put it in vials, as you see here, I just received uh, some of the material by FedEx uh, a few hours ago. Uh, and then um, we filtered out the tiny particles that are volcanic ash, and we were left with particles that are half a millimeter in size. We look at them through the microscope and we saw that they are spherical. These are called spherules, which are the melted droplets from the surface of the object, which uh, moved too fast to be bound to the sun. It came from interstellar space. It's the first time that humans put their hands on material from a large object that entered the solar system from outside. So I got two two sets of questions. Let's stick first with the little marble um, uh, objects. How do we know those mean anything more than just some combination of things that melted while it was zooming through space? Why is it possibly well, technology? This, based on uh, the US government data, we infer that the, the material strength of this uh, meteorite was higher than all space rocks cataloged by NASA over the past decade even iron meteorites. And uh, the question is, what was it made of? And perhaps it formed in some natural environment that is different from a planetary system like the solar system, but perhaps also it is technological in origin. A spacecraft like Voyager, imagine Voyager a billion years from now, going to interstellar space and colliding with a planet and burning up in the atmosphere of the planet as a meteor. That's a possibility. This object was moving faster than 95% of all stars in the vicinity of the sun. And so we decided to go out and check uh, any leftovers from that uh, meteor explosion, and we found it. So now we're planning to analyze it. So yeah, interesting to see like the little spheres and you know, when we look into, I saw, um, I think it was Tim mentioned uh, tektites as well. So when we look into, and I can see there's a cockatoo joining us in the background. He's watching. Actually, there's two of them in the trees. Um, so, yeah, when we look into tektites and, you know, beautiful Andara uh, crystals, things like this, it is really interesting. And I think we might have touched on very quickly sky ice in another one too. Um so it is interesting to see the different things that we get down here. Let me just bring up this next video. So with this one, we've got a short clip. I'm just going to play. This is Jeremy Corbell. Um, it's on Larry King by um, Bob Lazar and talking about element 115. So this is when we look at the periodic table, this is an extra element that they have discovered. So I'll just play this. 
So there's more information online with this. You guys would have seen it who went into the ET UFO subject for years. But, um, yeah, Bob Lazar back-engineered some devices and things. And element 115 is a, a super heavy element. It's something that we have only, only just recently synthesized. We only made four atoms of it. But um, the craft uses larger quantities of it, 223 gram little triangles of it. But it's a unique element. When it's exposed to radiation, it produces its own gravitational field, its own anti-gravitational field. And it's what's used to lift and propel the craft and create distortions around it. It's, a, it's an amazing material. And it's certainly nothing that occurs here or naturally. And it can be weaponized. And that's kind of the issue here. If this story is all true, that can be weaponized. Absolutely. Never miss a beat. Subscribe to Larry King now. And So I just saw someone had an amazing comment. Um, yeah, so Laurieann, definitely mainstream media is slowly dripping the information previously unauthorized to release to the general public. And I think that's why we're starting to see, you know, more information coming out around not just technology, but like also when we look into, um, you know, like the video we were talking about before to do with Deepak Chopra talking about black holes and things as well. So let me just see what we've got for you next. So this one is a craft that I filmed 10th of September, and this was in 2017. So I'm going to play this one for you. And I love being able to share like all these different things and have this, you know, this space. So I'm so grateful for being here on me. Hi there, my name is Marcus and I'm the founder of 8 Clients. And Our vision is to become the most creative social... So this is me trying to zoom in because our cameras are not made for, you know, for filming objects. So this is coming out the side. Mm, good boy. Like, um, I do have all my UFO videos up on YouTube as well, but you can see it here just above the tree. So this is more like a plasma um, type plant is what it looks like. But you can feel the consciousness. I'm going to look a bit closer. So when you see things like that, turn into like how it is that you feel. Is there a message that's coming through? Is there an activation? Is there something that they're wishing to communicate to you? Because they have cloaking technology. They don't need to be able to themselves. So I will stop that one right there. Um, but I do have more UFO videos up on my YouTube channel. So, yeah, hopefully you guys could see that. I know it was tiny at the start. Oh, thank you, Lion. Yeah. And that's such a sweet comment. I really appreciate it. So I'm just going to read this one out loud. So please consider booking a reading with Sorita on May on Jupiter. You would be very, very amazed at her ability and accuracy. So thank you for that. That's such a beautiful comment. Oh, good. I'm seeing that you guys could see this. Yeah, something is happening with the internet. I am on a brand new laptop. So everything's good on that end. Um, so I'm just going to bring up a picture because there is so many different types of UFOs. So with this one, you can see here, this is a little chart that just has a little depiction around different types that people might have seen. So we see up the top left the Adamski one. So if you guys have a look into <clears throat> the Adamski files, or sorry, the Adamski case, it's really very interesting. Some people were saying that it's fake, other people are saying that it's real. Um, there is some pretty good information and stories in that that do kind of, I guess, corroborate the story. Um, but he did also experience the one on the left. And then we see there's the mothership that looks to be a little bit more cylindrical or cigar shape. Um, that would be the third one in at the top that has these little kind of cylinders. It seems to be some kind of like a twist or a propulsion system that is around it when you look more into the Adamski information. But yeah, you can see there's different countries, like we're seeing some from um, Africa. We're seeing, um, 
yeah, various different shapes. Some are more kind of cigar shape or uh, like a, a triangular type shape or a diamond shape. And we will be looking into a few of those tonight as well. Um, oh, thank you. <laughs> yeah, it happens all the time with me <clears throat> with electronics as well. Oh, cool. And I can see Ben said Dr. Seller had a show recently about George Adamski um, showing unseen footage recommended. Thank you. It's so nice to hear, like, you know, for things to, to look into as well. And, yeah, so do, do like, catalogue. Like, if you guys see different types of craft and that, it's also interesting to, like, be able to go to charts like this to reference because some people will have put more information up around that. So I'm just going to jump on over to... Let me see if we've got, oh, yeah, we do have. And there was another photo that I had. Let me see. Oh, here it is. So I wanted to share with you, and I know I've talked about uh, Antonio Erzi and his wife, Simona, Sabella. So this is one of the photos of their craft. Um, so you can see here it's a really, really clear shot. He has the best, clearest ET or UFO footage, I should say. And he'll be filming from like his tiny little bathroom in his old place to stick the camera up through, you know, the skylight, um, I guess, lift up window that he has um, or had in his old house and just be filming like this. So what we also see too is if we look into the brains of contactees, there's different parts of the brain. I think it's called the Putman area. I know I've got it written down somewhere um, in some of my notes to do with other information I've been researching. So if we look into the brains of contactees or people like myself, what they suppose or surmise with people that are having these experiences, <clears throat> they have like an exaggerated or a larger basal ganglia in the brain. They also have an area, I think it's called the Cartier uh, or Cartier and the Putman. So these parts of the brain are more enlarged with people that are having ET contact. And what they found is that it seems to run in families. So yeah, you can see here with Antonio's amazing uh, picture of this. And the reason I brought this one up is I actually had one of these over my parents' place. So one night we were having a barbecue and this is local, like Melbourne, Victoria, um, in the Eastern suburbs. And my dad's an engineer. So my whole family is totally skeptical on all of this, even though, you know, the UFOs I've filmed and things like that, my family is still, you know, I'm the rainbow sheep in the family, like a lot of you guys are too. So um, yeah, we had the exact same looking craft just over us while we're outside having a barbecue all extended family there, my kids there, nieces, nephews, everyone. And this thing gets closer and closer. And my dad being an engineer, he's like, oh, it's probably just like a weather balloon or, you know, something like that. And then what we see is it coming closer and closer. And my dad's saying, like, uh, yeah, I don't think that's a weather balloon. So he was actually kind of like engaged and like looking. But what happens a lot of the time is that you will see or have experiences like this and then people totally forget. So I've had other friends and family have mass sightings or one incident, I think, out on the back deck with my sister one night and we had a fleet of five UFOs fly over at once. And then the next morning, you know, getting a text from her saying, oh, I know you guys believe in it, but I don't really believe in it. But it's interesting because we can capture our beliefs on camera. So yeah, they love me unconditionally, regardless of being like into the woo. Um, so with this craft though, what we actually noticed and what was so different about like when we look at the other pictures of craft, this center part kept disappearing. So this UFO that we saw that looked exactly the same would go to be a donut shape. And then all of a sudden fully formed and then a donut shape and then fully formed. And I can see others are also experiencing that. Yeah. And so Lorianne, um, your husband's an engineer and doesn't agree. Um, so at least we've got each other, guys. Isn't, isn't it good? Um, so yeah, isn't it funny? It's always a weather balloon. Poor little weather balloons. Um, and yeah, it's so lovely to see others born believers as well. Oh, thank you, Jackie. So Let's have a look at this other video that I have for you guys. And this one is a crashed craft that um, crashed in Russia. So I just want to bring up, hold on a sec, let me get this to come up. 
see a cockatoo behind me as we're doing this. Okay, here it is. So I fast forwarded it, but if you type in UFO crash in Soviet Russia, 1968. So this, a lot of people will talk about, you know, cases that are real, cases that are fake. This is supposed to be actual legit um, information. So I've turned the sound off because it was heavy metal music. Didn't think you guys would appreciate it so much. It was a strange one to go with it. So we can see here that it literally, there's other people that have done diagrams and things, and it looks like that it's come in, whether it's been shot down, who knows, but it does like a rotation flip and they feel that that's how it's kind of dug into the ground like this. So it is through things like, you know, crashed craft or craft that shot down. And we know that, um, you know, craft was shot down last year. I think it was over US Canada uh, area that this is where they sometimes retrieve ET technology. So they say that with the Roswell crash, and I didn't bring this one into the show because it's such a famous uh, one that's been talked about for years and years, but in the Roswell crash, they say that that's perhaps where we got some of the uh, reverse engineering to make iPhones and iPads and things like that. So we see where we go through like a huge quantum jump in terms of the information, but you know, knowing that we've had a lot of this information. I mean, this is in the 60s. So, you know, when we look into the Roswell case, which is even earlier, how long have they been holding back, um, whether it's free energy technology? Um, oh, and I can see here Ben also saying that, yeah, it runs in the bloodlines as well. It does. It always seems to come back to this. And there's a lot of interesting information that I've been looking into with blood that has come up maybe like four times this week. So it might be another show that we'll do on plasma and blood and consciousness. And I like this comment that Tim's got. Russia has a lot of UFO crashes. Um, wow. Yeah, who knows? Very, very interesting. Oh, <laughs> they're fighting over something out there. So this is the video. See how it's showing like that trajectory and how it possibly could have happened. So let me stop sharing this one. Oh, I thank you for your beautiful comments, guys. I appreciate the love. So let's have a look now into one of my friend's cases. And I think in the future, it'd be lovely to have him on and to really get into this in a little bit more depth and hear firsthand. So we have in the um, October 15th in 1996, uh, we see Jonathan Reed, who's pictured here in the plane and up in the little Facebook picture. So you guys can actually interact and follow him on Facebook. He's a beautiful soul. Anyway, he had where he was walking in a Washington state forest and he encountered this black craft, which almost looks a little bit like a tachyon. So that's also why I want to talk about tachyons. I'm going to have to make it quick to get through the show. Um, so we're seeing this black craft created and they have actually had like big Hollywood budget and things to recreate this side of things. And they still can't sort of get it to look exactly what this looks like. So yeah, anyway, he meets this being, which you see in the right hand side, you'll see a face that kind of looks a little bit kind of like turtle-like. Um, so when they tested the genetic material to do with this being, it actually came back that it was very, very similar to a, to a turtle. So it was a non-human um, ET. Uh, he's been nicknamed Freddy. So uh, what happened was Susie, Jonathan's dog, actually ran up uh, and encountered this being first. The being felt uh, scared or threatened, and unfortunately, Susie got literally pulverized into dust. So there's some kind of like technology or something that was used because the being obviously felt threatened. Um, but yeah, Jonathan picked up a giant log and actually knocked the being unconscious, thinking that it was dead. And so he after vomiting and just literally like sick for two hours on the encounter of this. So there's something sometimes with some of these beings or even like with, um, you know, Sasquatch, Bigfoot, Yowie type energies where we actually get like a sonar type field. And I've actually felt this uh, holding one of the ET skulls that Stephen and Evan Strong have, which I've talked about in other shows. Um, they will sometimes have like a, a sonar or like a shriek type um, energy as well. <laughs> yeah, I can see lovely comments. 
uh, feels more like a gift from the aliens. Yeah, definitely. Let's do a, a blood type one. That'd be awesome. Um, oh, and I can see here. Hold on a sec. So my dad was uh, O positive blood type and very psychic. I'm O positive as well. It's interesting. So yeah, with this, let's look into the next picture. But anyway, this being Freddie um, was said to be dead and you'll be able to find, so this is him wrapped up in one of those little um, survival sheets. So Dr. Reed had one of these sheets with him, wrapped the being up, dragged the being back to his home. So he actually is a doctor or you know how things sometimes when you uh, uh have disclosure sometimes like your uh, life can be stripped away so he literally has been shot had his house torn apart and we're talking about like all of the floorboards everything torn up trying to look for things so he popped freddy in the freezer it sounds like a strange case but it's actually really really amazing um so you can see here the um the wound with the blood leaking out and we can see here his eyes are actually open so he didn't realize at the time that this being was actually alive um so yeah really fascinating case and this being actually had this bracelet so this was part of the et technology and what's fascinating was on i think it was mex yeah it was mexican tv oh we can see a few other o positives as well and yeah, Tim's saying that um, acoustic weapons can make a lot of people sick on encounters with UFOs and cryptoids as well, or cryptids. So what we see here with the link, and it's interesting, if you look at the inside of this cuff bracelet, there will be what looks like little acupuncture needles. So when I've tuned into it, what I've kind of felt that happens, because when some people try this on, if they don't have the right intention or energy, there's been people that have died that have actually tried this cuff on. So you see on Jonathan's arm here, um, when he put it on live TV in Mexico, he his whole body literally just turned to light. Um, so yeah, whether it interacts my feel is that I feel the acupuncture needles interact with the, the nadis, the chakras energy system. And then we see like where we go into another dimension. So what he actually sees is he's met or taken into another realm that has these beautiful, unconditionally loving beings that look like Freddie. So it's an amazing technology. Some of the symbols on the, li uh, the link, because it's called the link, the bracelet, um, have also been spotted on craft and things as well. And there was said to be uh, ET language on some of the Roswell craft too. So how cool is that? And let me see what else we have. Okay, I'm just going to collapse some of these so that we can bring up the next one. All right, so we have here now where I, we'll talk about tachyon energy. So yeah, I might have Jonathan on, on in the future because it's such a fascinating case. Um, and his whole life was literally destroyed around it. So it's really, really sad, but I think he's in a much better place now. Um, yeah, it's very cool, hey? So with this one, we see here photon and tachyon energy. So I'll just talk to you guys quickly and explain like, um, my understanding of tachyon energy. So when we look into, say, EMFs, for example, so where I first heard about um, tachyons was when I was looking into, like, Tesla purple plates um, and someone saying it looks like a Wonder Woman type bracelet. It does, doesn't it? Um, so, yeah, if we look into, like, Tesla purple plates or we look into uh, organite or orgone energy, things that are designed to protect our auric or our bioelectric uh, auric field. So tachyons will actually harness the negative energy from the harmful EMFs and kind of pull on them and it will create a positive field. So that's kind of like a, an easy way to understand it or explain it. So let me bring this up and we'll just read this together. So what is the tachyon energy? Uh, tachyon energy are subatomic particles of light that travel faster than light. So the physical body is almost wholly electrical, chemical, and mechanical. So the, mechanic, uh, the medical profession seems to have forgotten this, and they work mainly on the chemical side. So up until now, science community has recognized that there are five senses uh, show them, and the energy field around living things cannot be seen, smelt, or felt 
with our five senses. So this has caused a big conflict in science and those who use the extra senses. So what I was talking to you guys about before to do with like the parts of the brain that are more exaggerated in psyches, e.g. contactees, um, what they found, especially I think it's the Poopman area, uh, if I'm saying that correctly, is responsible to do with like enhanced intuition and things as well. So people that have this equipment in the brain enhanced, we can literally see further in the spectrum. So that's why I can also see auras. For me, it was a gift that was never shut down as a child. So I've kept that with me my whole life. So when we look into, um, you know, uh, the bio field, as you guys have heard me talk about it, or the aura on many shows. And when I talk about aura drawings, we see things show up first in the field. And the way that I'm sort of looking at it from this point of view is because we're only a tablespoon of particles of physical matter, we actually exist more as energy. So that's why it's really important to protect this auric field, to protect energy. Um, <laughs> this is a cool comment. So science fiction, uh, is a fiction. It's all real. Isn't it cool? Hey, and let's have a look with this. So, so what is photon energy? So photons are quantum packets of light carrying energy. They also move faster than light. So the energy field around living things cannot be seen, smelt or felt with our five senses. So this has caused big conflict in science and those of us who use these extra senses. So Understanding tachyon and photon energy gives you an understanding of electrical aspect of our body with the development of Curlian and aura photography. The physical world can now see the energy fields of living things around, uh, around living things. So the energy field is called the aura, which is really pure photon or tachyon energy. And in the plasma show, I think we spoke about too, that with the Curlian photography, it's actually picking up on the plasma energy. And yeah, it's a huge part of when we look at the four fundamental states of matter, plasma actually exists in most of the space. So you will also see more information on that kind of energy with that Deepak Chopra uh, video that we brought up before. So you can see here about um, with the pyramids and things like that, they talk about Tesla plates, um, and how they're made. So this was on teslaplatesaustralia.com where they talk about photon and tachyon energy. You can also have a look into buying different things. Since my college days, this has been something that, um, you know, I've been interested in researching and uh, studying. Oh, uh, thank you. That's such a beautiful comment. And yeah, I do spend a lot of time putting the information together for these shows and it very much is spirit led. So I'm just going to bring up All right, and Tim, thank you for your comment. It's nice to, it's nice when people have watched the other shows too that I'm like, yep, I did talk about that. So let's just bring this one now is, you know, I like to have fun with these shows too. So what you're going to see here is this is from a movie and you can see here it's from The Flash. So Barry gets four times faster speed with the tachyon device. So I want to show you a visual science fiction representative of how they could maybe apply this kind of ET technology. So let me just check. I've got the right screen share. I just want to make sure it's set so you guys can hear the sound. Um, yep. Yeah, cool. All right. Tachyon enhanced route for test drive. <laughs> Oh yeah, I feel that. That is the tachyon device powering up the speed force in your cells like a quick charge battery. How do you feel? Different. Let's see how long it takes you to get back here. On my count. Three, two, one, go. Dang, this thing got you cruising. How fast does he normally go? Not this fast. Not even close. Are his vitals okay? Yeah, they're perfect. Cool. It's like having a pit stop attached to your chest. Guys, I can go faster. Do it. <laughs> So 
anyway, that was just a little bit of fun. So we're sort of coming towards the end and I have maybe one little thing extra to share, but I do recommend to have a look into if you are interested in, you know, protection devices and things like that. Um, you know, if, if you are sensitive to EMFs, which we all are, we have auras, uh, animals are quite sensitive to this too, or if you're sensitive to, you know, the different towers and things, I won't say the name of them. Um, but yeah, please like, share, subscribe. So I recommend looking at the Tesla Purple Plates Q link. So if I was going to categorize the ones that I've energetically felt into, we have an um, Geo Cleanse Orgone Protector plug that we put into our house at recircuits and goes through the electricity system. Uh, so that was one that I found worked really, really well when they started bringing smart meters in. So even though I protected my house that I had at the time, locked it up so they couldn't come and put that kind of uh, disruptive tech uh, in, you still will be impacted because it's like microwave technology bouncing from house to house. So sometimes it will concentrate. So yeah, Debs is also saying um, Shungai and your technologies as well. Be interested to hear more about your technologies too. So um, with this, I like a Q link, probably followed by looking into Tesla purple plates, tachyons, and then I sort of get more into like the shungites and organites and things. But if we're looking at the Q link, they also have sometimes their quantum hologram technology, and some of them will have a Tesla uh, ring, which will have a pulse that puts you into like your normal harmonious energy field. So if you're interested in that, um, definitely go down that rabbit hole. And let me just see this last video that we have. Or this last little screen share. So this is an invisibility cloak. So you know how they talk about the Harry Potter uh, invisibility cloak? Oh, that's a cute comment. <laughs> Thank you. And I saw someone represent, what was it, talking about Wonder Woman before. That was a lovely one too. Thank you. So let's play this one. So we see here this kind of technology that reflects or diffracts light, and that's how they're using it. So maybe it's in technology to make it more dynamic. Now, how much fun would this work be? Also, if it could vary with what they use. I'm just going to stop this one here. There's a few different videos that you'll see on this. So I wanted to make sure to have a look into cards and see if there's anything Spirit wanted us to know around this subject. And I individually would like to look into each of the subjects, but I just really wanted to put all this information together for you guys tonight. So let's have a look into why we were guided to talk about this subject. And I did run and sneak off and get a blanket before because it is cold here this morning, even with the heater on. But I know a few of you guys are experiencing crazy weather as well. So we do have five cards here on my desk tucked in with a blanket. So let's have a look into this. And energetically, it's really interesting. The reason that they're getting us to talk on this subject, I'm actually, so say if we pretend this blanket is like a fluffy cloud, I'm actually being shown it's where they're trying to kind of lift us into a higher state and an advancement to do without understanding around technology, around free energy. I feel that they're trying to help us come up in our consciousness. What I'm also seeing is it feels like a, a place of purity is where they're trying to bring us into. I actually feel that they're trying to take us into a different timeline. What they're actually focusing on and showing me is that it must become an individual shift first. So what they're showing me is a lot of the darkness and a lot of the destructive scenes and dirty technology and things that we're seeing 
they actually want us to feel bad uh, within this. And when I mean they, I'm talking about the dark side of things. So spirit is actually talking about for us to visualize and kind of almost fantasize about the capabilities of some of this amazing technology and how it could be utilized. So they want us to create and breathe in to our future all of these beautiful, amazing technologies. Um, let's flip the cards and see what we have. So yeah, there's definitely been a suppression around this and where I was talking about sort of like building in or bringing this into future, we have a card that represents exactly this. So this is in the future placement. So I'll get into it into a moment, but the vision I was having matches this card uh, perfectly. So we see here where there's been suppression and where we've been held back. So seven of disc, it is the card of failure. It's Taurus and Saturn energy. And you guys that watch me regularly know that I talk about this being represented as a nest. So we've got potential that hasn't been hatched. So there would be other things that have perhaps been reversed, engineered, used by certain people, but we perhaps haven't got that technology in the wider array of humanity just yet. Um, we do see a nine of wands as well. So nine of wands traditionally is, you know, to keep like having a go or we've been harmed over and over again. So we usually see the man with his little wand, the bandage on the head. What we see here as well, instead of kind of getting pulled into duality, different timelines and into the darker side of things, we actually have to kind of consciously raise our consciousness. So Sagittarius, there's the moon eclipse and the sun here as well. So maybe this is a perfect timing for us to actually do this show just after this eclipse too. And we have the next card is the full. So they're really wanting us to start to uh, bring this on. The, uh, what's the word? Go down this rabbit hole. To me, this is a feminine archetypal Alice in Wonderland energy. So we need to kind of start visualizing, going down the hole and what would it be like? And this card, you guys know that Spirit calls this my law of assumption card. So we see here with the... Um, the princess of disc, she's Aries energy. She holds her own belief system and literally creates her own reality. So we have the octahedron, which as a platonic solid and in sacred geometry relates to the element of air. So it's to do with what we put out we consciously, what we hold within, we consciously start to have that show up in our reality. So if we're visualizing and holding on to, you know, this pure state that they're trying to bring us into in this pure higher consciousness plane, the more of us that do this and see that as our reality, the more that it will show up this way. So with this shape too, it's also said that there is a little electron that's in the center. So between these two kind of pyramidal energies exists that first spark or that energy that we need to bring things into existence. So with her, you know, I refer to her as the stubborn teenager. So she literally is telling the world that the trees grow upside down in her reality. So this is really about ignoring the external, the 3D, the negativity that's on the news and, you know, all of these things to really kind of imprint what you want the world to look like and the consciousness um, shift will come from that way. So we know that, what is the number? 144,000. Um, we hear that all the time. So we know that that is also raising. So we are coming into a higher state um, of, of consciousness in that way. So we then have going forward for the future, the card of the universe. So we see here, it's almost trying to kind of like shield or control the way that energy um, hits as well. So with this card of the universe, we see this activation of Kundalini energy, uh, and what we see, this is about closing and ending cycles as well as new beginnings. So we see down here the mansion. And I did write a note. Spirit was giving me a download around this. Um, they were giving me a download around kind of doing, whether it's a meditation or kind of visualizing things energetically first. So, for example, this must be why they were giving this vision to me last night. So the vision that I got from spirit last night, they were showing me energetically visualizing. So say, for example, we're looking at manifesting something on a physical level. They're talking about building the etheric or kind of like the energy bone structure of something first and then quantumly entangling ourselves with it. So if we're talking about with um, this future and they keep showing me a glass, maybe because it's got water and water holds substance, holds frequency, we know 
that we can use this for quantum jumping as well. So what they were showing me last night that I will get more into this information. I, they got me to note it down. So if we kind of energetically are here, but we want to get here, we need to first kind of visualize the ethereal, etheric energy. And we know that if this is a plasma state too, and then we quantumly entangle ourselves like with that frequency, with that energy, we're putting kind of our charge on it. So this is going to help manifest it more into the physical too. So there's something around that message that's connected with holding this intention for humanity. And I just think it's so beautiful that, you know, spirit would give us this topic and then the cards that we get at the end. So it's kind of like, yes, this information is cool. And, you know, we get to go down this rabbit hole. But the whole intention around why they wanted us to talk about it is for us to create a positive timeline, to be able to create a, um, yeah, a positive future. So let me just bring up and share some final windows. Oh, and I want to give you guys, you guys a card. Let's go into the Starseed deck. I'm going to give you a card for the weekend. If there's anything spirit would like us to focus on, we have release. So release anything that keeps you from your path of authenticity. And what's interesting is authenticity is actually a higher frequency than love is what um, science is now saying when they measure it on like a frequency level. So yeah, definitely have a look into this for the week. What is it that you need to release? I know here I've been doing like a whole purge cleanse and <clears throat> have set up like a whole new color scheme with the couch and things and got a new bed. And yeah, it's been really lovely. So please jump on over to YouTube, like, share, subscribe. Please share this with someone that is into the geekier side of things um, or into science and everything. But go check out some of the shows. The girls have had the really good um, new moon total eclipse as well. I recommend ch checking that out as well as Sophie's forecast for the week ahead. And I also want to remind you guys as well that you can also head on over to, I'm just going to bring this up, to Mesa Jupiter and book a reading with me. So please use all caps, write Jupiter in the code and you'll save 10%. So you can see the gorgeous Sophie here too. So we all have the same code word, which is Jupiter. So the Starseed reading, the Mystical Oracle reading, either way, you're going to get an aura drawing and we're going to look into that biofield because there's so much information that's held within there. And <clears throat> we also have the beautiful Elena candles. Um, yeah, you can see that they're here for purchase too. And I saw someone mention about a mug as well. So I haven't checked that out yet this morning, having just woken up myself. So yeah, check out what's available, like what's on there. Uh, anyway, I just wanted to thank you guys so much for joining me tonight. And I've had so much fun sharing this information with you. Um, yeah, it's interesting, isn't it? Like with the like side of things, I do think sometimes we're a little bit restricted, especially when we share on subjects that are a bit sensitive in nature. So I love you guys very much. And I will see you next week with some exciting galactic comments and, uh, galactic shows i'm going to get some downloads through the week and what spirit wants me to talk about but have a beautiful weekend